according to the tables which we have assembled, it is our estimate that 4% of the American people own 85% of the wealth of America, and that over 70% of the people of America don't own enough to pay the debts that they owe. How many men ever went to a barbecue and would let one man take off the table what's intended for nine-tenths of the people to eat? The only way you'll ever be able to feed the balance of the people is to make that man come back and bring back some of that grub he ain't got no business with. Now, how are you going to feed the balance of the people? What's Morgan and Baruch and Rockefeller and Mellon going to do with all that grub? They can't eat it. They can't wear the clothes. They can't live in the house. Give them a yacht. Give them a palace. Send them to Reno and give them a new wife when they want it. If that's what they want. But when they've got everything on the God's living earth that they can eat and they can wear and they can live in, and all that their children can live in and wear and eat and all their children's children can use, then we got to call Mr. Morgan and Mr. Mellon and Mr. Rockefeller back and say, come back here. Put that stuff back on this table here that you took away from here that you don't need. Leave something else for the American people to consume. And that's the problem. We're not going to destroy the Gulf Refining Company. We're not going to destroy the Standard Oil Company. But we're going to say that the limit of any one man stock ownership in the Standard Oil Company is from three to five million dollars to that individual and that the balance of the people of America own the balance of what the Standard Oil Company is worth. All right. Then, we start from the bottom that the 25 or more million American families shall have a homestead, a home, and the comforts of a home, including an automobile and a radio, the things it takes in that house to live on. We say to America, 125 million, none shall be too big, none shall be too poor, none shall work too much, none shall be idle. No luxurious mansions empty, none walking the streets, none impoverished, none in pestilence, none in want. But in the land, blessed by the smile of the Creator, with everything to be consumed, to be eaten, to be worn, that America will become a land, sharing the fruits of the land, not for the favored few, not to satisfy greed, but that all may live in a land in which the Lord has provided an abundance sufficient for the luxury and convenience of the people in general, I think. Long was on course to win the White House in 1936 and take it away from the banker's puppet Roosevelt. They called Huey Long Hitler. They called him Mussolini. They said he was a communist, and when that didn't stop him, they shot and killed him. Huey Long motivated and organized the people to elect a man who would serve their best interests. A strong independent candidate could do the same today and prevent Biden or Trump from further destroying America at the behest of Israel and the bankers. Everybody that understands politics will tell you this, what, what's happening today could not happen. They called me the day after the Larry King show and said, everybody that wasn't employed that was looking for a job in politics called me. <laughs> and said, here's a common message. Don't you understand that ordinary people can't organize themselves? They can't get this done? Very difficult, very tedious. Well, you show them. Yeah. Now, their position was you had to be told what to do. Now, I've had enough of that myself. Yeah. 
and apparently you have too. So congratulations on doing the job they said couldn't be done. Now specifically in Texas, here's why they said just forget it. Now keep in mind the hard part starts after November. So every time they say just forget it, remember this hot day in the sun when you delivered, right? Now, if you're going to quit, quit today. No. Okay, but the point is, I'll tell you when you can't quit if you love this country is after November. You've got you to stay in the rain every step of the way, then anything is possible. But here's why they said you couldn't do it. The May the 11th deadline was too short. The Texas petition signing process was designed to keep independents out and would fail. The fact that you could only solicit people who had not voted in the primary made it a maze too difficult to get through. And finally, they said 53,000 signatures? Just regular folks can't do that. Well, you know, in all fairness to them, you didn't. You did over 200,000.